Okay, so in the previous video, I talked about the idea of calculating the mass of CO2, which is one of the parameters that we need. And I said that in order to be able to do that, I have to subtract out the mass of air from my flask, so I get the mass of the real empty flask. Once I have that mass of the empty flask, then I can take the mass of CO2 in the flask, subtract it from the mass of the empty flask, and that would give me just the mass of CO2, okay? So then the question is, well, how do I get that mass of the empty flask? In order to get the mass of the empty flask, I have to take M1, which is the mass of the flask with air in it, and subtract out just the mass of air. So then the question is, how do I get the mass of air in this uh, flask right here? Well, let's think about it a little bit. We can use uh, the relationship of density to mass and volume to figure out the mass of air. We know that density is equal to mass over volume. So if we want the mass of air in here, we basically have to multiply the density of air times the volume of air in the flask. The density of air is something we can easily look up. And in fact, your lab manual has a table that shows you what the density of air is, various temperature and pressure. Now, the volume of air is something we can calculate or measure using a trick. Now, let me explain what that trick is. You remember that in the first video, I talked about the idea that volume is the same for the flask, and it's just equal to whatever is filling up the flask at that point, right? So if I have the volume of the flask, it's really the same as the volume of water, if I happen to fill up the flask with water. And it's also equal to volume CO2 if I happen to fill up the, the flask with CO2, and it's the same as volume of air. So you notice that volume of air is a quantity we're looking for, and we can get that volume as long as we know the volume of the flask, but the volume of the flask happens to equal the volume of water. So if we can somehow get the volume of water in this flask, we should be able to get the volume of air because those two quantities are equal. All right, now let's think about how to get volume of water. Remember, we could calculate the mass of water. Right? We talked about this in the previous video. The mass of water, when I fill the flask with water, is just going to be M3, which is this mass right here, minus M1, which is the mass of the flask with air in it. But because water is so much denser than air, the mass of air can be neglected, and as a result, the mass of water is just M3 minus M1. Okay? Once I get the mass of water, I can use that to find the volume of water. And again, I'm going to rely on that density equation to help me figure out the volume of water. Density is mass over volume. So then volume of water will be equal to the mass of water, which we just calculated here, and over density of water. Well, how do I find the density of water? Remember that we can look up density of water values as a function of temperature and uh, these values are provided in your lab manual in this case so we can use that numbers again okay so once we get the volume of water that volume of water is the same as the volume of air now before we actually go ahead and calculate the mass of air one of the useful things that we just did was figure out the volume of co2 as well because remember that volume of co2 and volume of water is the same so that means that one of our four parameters that we're looking for now is just determined when we calculate the volume of water. All right, now the last thing we need is that volume of air, which will allow us to calculate the mass of CO2, right? All right, so mass of CO2, as we just said, is going to be calculated by taking M2, which is the mass of the flask with CO2 in it, minus M1, uh, but the M1 has to be uh, subtracted first by the mass of air inside it. So in other words, this is what we call the mass of the real empty flask. How do we get the mass of air? Well, remember, we just say that we found the, the volume of air when we figure out the volume of water inside the flask, right? So we have volume of air. We can use our density relationship. So in other words, the mass of air is just going to be equal to volume of air times the density of air. Like I said earlier, the density of air is something you can look up in your lab manual. And then the volume of air is the value that you ha had earlier for the volume of water. It's the same number. So when you multiply these two, you get the mass of air. You subtract from M1 the mass of air, 
then you subtract m2 from that remaining number then what you get is your mass of co2 so now you have all four of these parameters right pressure temperature volume and mass and from there we can determine our molar mass this is a reminder the molar mass has this equation the mass the temperature the pressure the volume all those experimental parameters as well as r the ideal gas constant